I'm Jess, and it's so great to be with you for a few moments today. Welcome to Kingston Standard Church, our online version. I'd love to invite you to connect with us online or in person. If you're in the Kingston area, come on out. We would love to see you. If you're limited to online connection, though, not a problem. Just be sure to check out our website for at-home worship resources. But in the description box of this video, you're going to find the link to our website. As well, you can always follow us on YouTube and like us on Facebook and be sure to subscribe to both so that you'll stay up to date on all the new content when it's posted. We have a variety of resources available to families and kids on both Facebook and YouTube. So if this is your first time joining us, or if you've been here before, we want to encourage you to go ahead and check that out. Because our mission is to equip families for the conversations that they have together to learn and grow and follow Jesus. And if you want to touch base personally, then feel free to reach out. You can send us a message on Facebook or you can use the address below. So let's dive in and see what we're going to learn about today. I've mentioned before how I was in a season of waiting when it came to one of my first ministry roles. I had prayed in September of that year to have an opportunity to work with a certain pastor at some point before he was done and, and retired in ministry. And so then September became October and November and December, and January and February and March. And it just seemed like it was taking forever because I'm living inside my own head and I'm thinking about this and every moment of every day, I'm wondering, is today going to be the day that he calls? And in our group of churches, most pastoral hires happen in the early spring, like February, March, and I'm praying and it's now April. And while I'm waiting for this man to call, I mean, there's a number of options that came up, right? In the time that you would expect them to, and they were good options. They were things that I could have done and really enjoyed. And every time I would have one of those conversations, it was, well, you can do this, or you can wait for my best. And I started letting go of those opportunities, and I, I let all of them go. I turned them all down, and then... It was the end of April when I had let them all go, and a week or so later, who should call but this man, Pastor Fred. Now, for a moment, I kind of had to give my head a shake, right? I mean, is this really happening? I, I waited for what had felt like so long that it didn't even seem real. But honestly, the decision was made. It was done. I was like, okay, yeah, we're going to do this. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I think all of us have probably had moments where we've been waiting on things and then all of a sudden it lands. It could be, you know, a job or a resolution to a problem. It could be as simple as waiting for someone to emerge from a house to get into the car or waiting on some kind of lifelong dream. But it doesn't matter what the situation is. Waiting is never, ever easy, is it? In fact, sometimes impatience in waiting can end up tripping us up. We can kind of run into things and, and end up messing things up in the process. And uh, I mean, you know, we've all had those moments where we're waiting on what we want. But when you add in the wrinkle of, you know, what is it that I'm waiting on to see that God is revealing? Boy, that just feels like a whole other layer. And what does that do in us? As we look at the scripture today, I mean, we're going to get a chance to see what life looks like kind of at the end of waiting. We finally see what we've been waiting for, but we're going to be able to kind of explore what helped us hang in there during that time of waiting. And where we are is in Luke chapter 2 today, and the timing is just a little over a week after Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Verse 25 of chapter 2 says, at that time there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was a righteous and devout and, uh, man, and he was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come to rescue Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. 
Now, from what we've read so far, we can assume, or maybe we do assume, that Simeon is an elder statesman in Jerusalem. But we have no idea how old he is. And we have no idea how long he's been waiting, hanging on to this promise. And we have no idea how many days he's gone to the temple to realize, okay, it's not today. You know, that's a difficult place to be in. Strange, isn't it? I mean, you're kind of living in the here and now, but also there's this not yet thing that's happening. And some have described it as the land in between. We've kind of left what we knew and we're not quite all the way to what we hoped for. And sometimes we're waiting, maybe not patiently, but sometimes patiently for whether it's direction or opportunity or love or a change. And in Simeon's case, to see this turning point that God has promised to show him. So after a long series of days that just pretty much look the same for Simeon, verse 27 continues. It says, that day the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. And he took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace. As you have promised, I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people, Israel. Now, this is an incredible moment for Simeon, right? I mean, this is the experience he's been waiting for. And I don't know about you, but as I mentioned earlier, sometimes when that moment actually comes, it's a little jarring. I mean, is this really happening? I've been waiting so long for this. I can't believe it's actually happening right now. There's beauty in this moment that Simeon was fully present, ready to embrace the turning point in history that God was revealing to him. And he continues in verse 33. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them. And he said to Mary, the baby's mother, this child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall, and many others will rise. And he's been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. And as a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. Now, when you really think about it, this is a significantly cool moment in Scripture. I mean, it gives us a great moment to recognize how what God has promised Simeon is fulfilled, but also great insight to be able to see, you know, to catch a glimpse of what God is revealing to us and how to continue to walk through that well. I mean, in some ways, I mean, waiting on God can feel complicated, right? I mean, when we think about it, we might be leveraging like, okay, there's a secret formula and I'm going to be taking notes. What's involved? What are the steps? And, and is there something radical or new that I, I need to understand about that? But, you know, when we're waiting on what God is revealing, we need to see a little bit of what this looks like on a daily basis. And, and I would suggest that there are some patterns that are revealed even here in the scripture of Simeon's life that, that God makes sure we see so that it can help us in our times when we find ourselves waiting. I mean, they're just simple realities that we can see how Simeon, first of all, listened. And you can kind of say, well, of course he listened. I mean, but sometimes it could be easier to think of this and understand it if we look at it from the opposite direction. Would we say that Simeon was inattentive? That Simeon was indifferent? I mean, of course not. So we recognize Simeon was attentive to God, meaning that you know, what God said to Simeon made a difference in his day-to-day -day life. Now, that's simple, but critical, right? I mean, sometimes we listen, but we don't necessarily appreciate what's really going on. Uh, this is listening with action in mind, because uh, there's a lot of voices that we will speak up into our lives, things, things that we hear, things that we listen to, things that raise responses that we maybe think need to happen, there's this guy I know, and, and 
as he kind of comes into situations where there are decisions that are pending or people are trying to figure something out, it's oftentimes I'll hear him say, let's do something even if it's wrong. And it's tempting, right? And to jump in and try and just make things happen. But listening is not just hearing, it's understanding meaning and processing through that. And so, you know, what we hear needs to make a difference in what we do next. And Simeon was that kind of attentive as he followed through on what God had led him to do. So it was the simple action step that followed listening. We can also see how Simeon just very simply showed up. Now, I don't know about you, but I mean, there's a lot of times in life when I have repetitive tasks that I need to do. And some of those repetitive tasks, sometimes I just kind of feel like, okay, could we do this some other way? Or is there some other new approach? Or do I have to keep doing this? Because sometimes repetitive tasks can get mundane over a period of time, right? You find yourself in a routine that just makes every day look like all the other days. Nothing amazing or important is going to happen today. You can understand in that kind of a context how Simeon would have gone to the temple wondering if today was the day that he was going to see what God had promised. And then he returns home. Nothing new. Same story. He could have become kind of discouraged, right? I mean, he'd been there all those days and he still hasn't found what he's looking for. Uh, But the scripture shows us how the Holy Spirit led him to the temple that day. And even after so many days and weeks and years of not seeing what was promised, Simeon still showed up. Maybe you've heard it said, I know I've heard it said, that 90% of life is just showing up, being present in the moments that we're appointed to pursue. And so Simeon showed up, and all by itself, that was important. But I think it's also worth noting that Simeon responded to what God had shown him. Now, you know, reading through this, it's kind of hard for us to imagine that Simeon would have just walked on by this couple and their baby. But it was a busy season in Jerusalem. I mean, he could have missed them entirely. There wasn't anything probably distinguishing Mary and Joseph from any other poor couple that was coming to dedicate their child at the temple. They didn't have a big arrow floating over their head or some kind of digital video screen circle that was pointing them. There was no tracking chip that allowed Simeon to kind of follow along. You're 50 feet away, 20 feet away. Okay, they're right there. Simeon hadn't caught any of the social media posts that had revealed All the amazing moments with shepherds and angels and a birth in a stable. He didn't even have a picture of what he was looking for. But God pointed him to this couple and he spoke to them. Now looking back, that kind of seems pretty simple, doesn't it? But if we stop and think about it for just a moment, it is kind of amazing. Because, you know, how often do we receive some prompting about maybe speaking up to someone or sharing something with somebody and we just kind of put our heads down and and keep on going. I don't want to interfere or it's not my business. I I don't know if that's really what I, I feel right now or it's not my place to speak. But Simeon just responded to what God showed him. This is them. And he talked to them. You know, I mean, it's kind of amazing when we think about it and we see this over and over again in scripture and in the way of Jesus, like when someone responds to God and and does what he asks, the person who responds, as well as the person who is receiving that response, like the person that they speak to, they both receive something from God. The person who speaks up receives the blessing of following through and, and the person who is shared with I mean, they receive whatever it is that God is seeking to do in their life. And and we know that sometimes it doesn't land, you know, right at that moment. Sometimes it lands after the fact. Sometimes it's a little bit more subtle. It's not quite as obvious. And we maybe hear about that impact a lot later. And sometimes it can even take a while to sink in. But ultimately, both 
individuals in the arrangement. As someone follows God and does what he asks them to do, everybody receives something from God. Now, Simeon's life here is just a real simple example of what it means to wait well. While you're waiting, listen, show up, and respond. You know, like Simeon, we're all kind of looking for turning points in life, right? I mean, we've been maybe making investments in people that seem like they just aren't making a difference yet. Or, you know, we're serving folks and it doesn't seem to have made any kind of an impact. Maybe we're praying for situations or, or people that always just seem to look the same, even though we've been praying for so long. And, and, and you know, we can feel like we're just wrapped up in the daily grind. There's nothing spectacular. It's just average. But you know, I think that what we see in Simeon that is as we listen and as we show up and as we respond to what God is showing us, you know, the moment doesn't have to pass us by. We can allow God to reveal what he's doing and what he longs to show us in the time that he's bringing it. God told Simeon he was going to see this turning point. You know, as a, as a congregation, as we come to the end of another church year here, here at the end of April, I mean, there's some cool things that God is looking to reveal to us as individuals and as a congregation in the next 12 months. And the payoff is to see the turning points that God wants to reveal. A little bit like the way Simeon saw it. And when we think about that, I know I want to see those turning points. And I'd love it if you were part of that journey with us too. Let me pray for us today. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for how Simeon's life is just a very simple example of what it means to wait well, to listen, to show up, and to respond to what you're showing us. And so God, I pray that you'd help us if we find ourselves in a period of waiting. Whatever that waiting looks like, I pray that you'd help us to listen and, and to, to show up and to respond to you as we walk with you through this time in our lives. And as a congregation, as we continue to look to you for what you are doing in us and with us, I pray that you'd help us to listen well, to show up well, to respond to you well. So that as we're waiting on you and as you direct us, the moments that you're looking to reveal are things that we don't end up passing by and missing. We love you and we thank you for your kindness, your goodness to us today. You could do everything that you need to do in this world completely without us, but you, you choose to involve us. And so thank you for that privilege of being a part of what you're doing in the world, in your kingdom. And I pray that you'd help us to have a mindset, to listen, to show up and respond as we work with you and as we walk with you. In your name I pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channels or if you're watching this on Facebook, then you can like and follow us there. And it would mean so much to us if you took a moment to comment, like, and share this video so that others are able to enjoy it as well. And hey, if you're in the Kingston area, come on in. We would love to see you. Please know, though, that you are loved and that we're praying for you. And we certainly appreciate your prayers, too. We'll see you soon.